What is it about the ocean that can calm us one moment and then excite us the next? Is it our connection? Is it the sound? Why are we so swayed by its charisma? It comes down to one word, tone. And much like the ocean, a host is the one to set the tone of a show. Comedians, actors, and musicians have all stepped into the role, but much like any art form, there's a craft to hosting. It's time to pull back the curtain and put our host center stage. The lights are up, the mic is hot, it's time to set the tone. Welcome to Set the Tone. I'm your host, Aaron Smalls, and I've had the privilege of hosting hundreds of live events and TV shows across the world. And a couple of questions that I get asked pretty often are, how'd you get this job, or how can I do what you're doing? And well, I never really have an answer for it. So I decided to call some friends who have made a successful career in the industry as host, and we're gonna take a look at their journey and find out how their talent, energy, and charisma shapes events. How does an Arkansas football player on summer vacation in Los Angeles end up hosting over 45 national television shows over the course of his career? Well, we're going to find that out right now. The lights are up, the mic is hot, there's only one thing left to say and that's... Action! <laughs> da -da -da, da -da -da. Here we are, Sports Center. Well When I look in the mirror, I see great hair. What exactly is it that you see in the mirror? He's more than just great hair on a pretty face. He is an electrifying talent. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce, to set the tone, my good friend, Rossi. Oh, hey, what's up? Sorry, I was just acknowledging the live audience. They're all fired up today. A lot of good energy here in the studio, I love it. Rossi, man, how's your hair maintained its perfectness over these years? I don't know, Aaron, I gotta be that. honest. Look at it that. Is. It's, and here's what's weird, it's getting better. This is getting grayer, but this is like getting like thicker and, and like wavy and I don't know. Rossi, man, it's great to have you here on the show. So Arkansas football player, wide receiver, right? Yeah, I walked on, got my ass handed to me for two years, I mean, just obliterated on the scout team and then and then again hard work perseverance just won't take no for an answer end up getting a scholarship and lettering for three years and you know playing against tom brady in the citrus bowl uh my junior year and uh, another cotton bowl my senior year and just unbelievable experience but but it, and it, it definitely it set the tone for exactly what i did which was go to california and take on the most difficult industry in the world and just not take no for an answer and uh, you know still be here 20 years later. How does that even happen that you are on vacation and then somehow you end up in this career path? How does that even happen? I came out here literally for the summer after I graduated. You know, being in Arkansas, it's not amazing. I've been in Arkansas my whole life. I just wanted to go and live a little bit, uh, especially since I've been a football player since I was six and hadn't had a summer vacation since I was in high school. So I just went to Hermosa Beach for the summer Long story short, ended up uh, becoming a nanny, or the manny for three little girls that were 10, 8, and 6. Uh, their dad offered me a job selling commercial printing. Didn't want to do that. Got back into football, tried out for the Avengers, tried to do the Arena League. Had a, a, an opportunity to do that, and in the process of me getting kind of back in football shape in that year, stumbled across a, a lady, Marky Costello, who's very known out here in California. She's Lou Costello's granddaughter from Abbott and Costello. And she oh. cast me on a show called Temptation Island. In 2001, like not the new one on USA, the one on Fox in 2001 when there was really no reality shows except for one season of Survivor and Real World. Was this was this an open casting or did, how did, did you, how did you get the audition without having an agent? How does that work? Uh, in that situation, I was with my roommate at the time who was Vanessa Manila, who's married to Nick Lachey, Vanessa Lachey, and we were just leaving her. We, I was just, we were just running errands, we were just together. And we walked out of this building and there was a, a door that had a casting sign on it, said Casting Temptation Island. We'd watched the first one, thought it was hysterical. We were like, oh, let's go in there and act like a couple. Like, that'll be hysterical. And uh, we did. And we went in there and they're like, they were looking for kind of an Asian-y, Islander-y type person, you know, because everything about TV is they want to make it all perfect. And she said that, we're like, we're look and sh Vanessa is, She's kind of that mix of, of um, island, uh, like kind of Pacific Islander, if you will. And uh, they just, they loved her. 
And they're like, how old are you guys? Like, is this real? And we're like, oh yeah. She was only 20. She didn't turn 21 until after the shooting, so she couldn't do it. You had to be, you had to be 21 before the shoot dates. And so I was like, you know what, to be honest, this isn't working. I want to just break up because I want to be on the show. She said she was pregnant. I said it was somebody else's. Long story short, she, at the end, I think said that I had AIDS, which is not funny at all. But in the moment, was ridiculous because that's what we were being was just ridiculous. Just ah. ridiculousness was just ensuing. <laughs> yeah, and so we started, we, we just started laughing because we couldn't keep this facade because the cast director's like, I mean, they're like, this went on for like five minutes. I'm talking like a, a battle, like a boyfriend girlfriend battle. We start laughing, like, look, we're just friends. And she was like, why do you hang out with this guy? And she goes, because he's the funnest guy now. And then I ended up on Temptation Island. After that, um, I ended up working for Marky uh, as one of her casting kind of directors, like, like I, not directors, like assistants. Uh, and after that, we did a couple commercials. And then we were casting for a show called Junkyard Wars. And I sat there for three days watching people audition. And I didn't know what a host was or really understand what a host was, but I was just watching these people talk about cars and engines, and I was watching their personality change from when I talked to them to when I said, okay, action. And they would just immediately, it was like, hey, what's up? I'm Jimmy. I live down on the beach. I love to surf. I'm an artist. You know, I'm, I like to drink my beers. I'm like, great. Action. Hi, my name's Jim. And I, and I was like, oh, oh, Jimmy, like what happened to you, man? And so at the very end, I was like, look, can I audition for this show? Like, I know I can do this. And she was like, no, you don't have a reel or headshots or anything. And uh, so I waited until she left the office uh, at the end of the day. I jumped in front of the camera, hit record, did the audition, and just said she was my manager. And then I actually rewound the tape, the VHS tape. And, she, and then I put it in a mail and I, and I sent it to Discovery on, on her behalf. What did Marky do when she found out that they loved you? And she told hilarious. you not that you couldn't audition. Well, it's funny because I'm in the other room, right? And so, and I hear she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, Sandy's great. Oh, we love Jenny. Oh, okay, Sandra, fantastic. Rossi. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's this new up and comer from Arkansas, sweet southern boy. You know, like, like she just goes right into manager mode and then hangs up. Get in here, you mother. And I was like, oh, man. So I just walked in, you know, 23 years old, a little arrogant, and I was like, told you I could do it. After that, how did, how did it continue? Did you end up booking Junkyard Wars and... So yeah, so I ended up booking Junkyard Wars, and then about two weeks later, so this is going to be about six months later when we started shooting Junkyard Wars, about two weeks later, one of her clients was getting fired for this video game show. It was a network called G4 back in the day, all video games, an all video game network. And so... She said they, they called her to tell her they were, they were firing one of her guys and they were going to recast it. And she just said, well, wait a minute. If you're going to fire my guy, can I send over some, another option? Because they wanted to go from a video game guy to a, an athlete that could to t interview athletes and other athletes about video games. So it was almost like a sports show where we showed highlights in the video game, whether it be, you know, NBA yeah, or okay. whatever. And um, I went over there and I literally walked in. She said, go over, it's across the street. She's like, go over there. If you want to be a host, you should book this show. I'm like, all right, again, no experience, just kind of winging it. Walk over there, the lady's like, look at the camera. Here's your options of all, everything you're gonna say. It's like a script written on a, on a pad, like written mm -hmm. out on a big legal pad thing, right? Yeah. And so I look at it, and I'm like, okay, name of the show, athletes, football, basketball. Okay, got it. And she's like, ready, I'm like, ready. And she's like, you can just look over whatever you want. I was like, got it. She's like, action. And I was like, da 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 The end, right in the camera, never looked away, never looked back at the paper. And she was just like, so did you just memorize that? And I was like, yeah. I mean, it was sports, and I mean, I knew most of it, but sure, yeah, I memorized it. She was like, okay, thank you. I left. I walked back across the street. I might have stopped by 7-Eleven to get a Gatorade or something. By the time I got back to the office, I had booked that show. Wow, that's crazy. Because I never took lessons. I never did any of that. I learned by watching myself. And when I didn't like it or it didn't look good or it was weird or if I was like... And you were watching other people during the, the castings and the auditions. So you were kind of seeing what worked and what didn't. And you were saying that their personality initially when they walked in the room, you were like, okay, this is good. And then when the camera turned on, it was a completely different person, which kind of takes out that authenticity, which I think is crucial 
in in hosting and it just that office authenticity really helps create a connection or uh, a, a trust it's it's like the most important thing if you don't have a connection with your audience your audience isn't going to watch especially these days okay well rossi i'm gonna i'm gonna actually stop you real quickly because whenever i try and explain what i do as a host or what different hosts do people still have no idea they still look very confused they give you they give me the oh yeah i understand but i can still see they have no idea so instead of having you explain it to me right now, I'm just gonna have you demonstrate how to connect and how to build that trust and how to build that rapport in this very next section I like to call Set the Tone. This very next section is called Set the Tone because this is where I like to have the different hosts demonstrate a, a pertinent hosting skill. And I know that, like Rossi was talking about earlier, there's people that get in the room and they come really stiff or they become a completely different person. People don't understand what they're doing half the time. Most people don't know what they're doing when they talk. Because how many times do you get in front of a mirror and talk? You just talk. You've been talking your entire life. It's what you do. I used to tell people all the time, you come to my class, all you're doing is having me teach you how to talk. You've been talking forever, but I'm going to teach you how. How do you connect? What's exciting? Do I have to be yelling to be excited? Hey guys, what's up? I'm Rossi Morielli. Or can I be like, hey guys. What's going on? I'm Rossi Morial. This is going to be a fun day. It's all here. It's in your voice. It's in the. It's in your 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 trajectory. It's in, it's in your inflection. It's the way you change everything. But how you connect with people, like I mean, for instance, like you know, for you, this is awesome, right? Is this is this your dream show, Aaron? Yeah, absolutely. Being able to put a spotlight on hosting and what it is, and to be able to kind of pioneer what hosting is, yeah, absolutely. There's nothing, there's not another show out there like a, 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 a different type of show, a bigger show like Dream Show. This is it? I would love to start working more with like a kid's show. I feel like I still have this youthful energy. So here's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to actually tell you, because I have some opportunities here. I'm going to tell you how to get your own kid's show. I'm listening. And you're smiling and your eyes are lit up. I have no idea how to get your own kid's show, but you're my audience and I have to connect with you. So that's how I choose to connect. I'm gonna dive into you, right? And that's what hosts have to do. But we have to do it sometimes for a stage of 10,000, sometimes in a green screen with no one around, just like now, talking to the people. Now, right now, there's an audience watching us, but you and I are having a conversation. So the yeah. only way for me to connect with you as a host is to talk to you about you. And that's what we have to do. There is no way to do that. If I could do it in this room by myself, then it's not connecting. Then I'm just acting. I'm making it up. So I can't show you how to connect with an audience until that audience is in front of me and then I can connect with them. Well, you've been, you've been hosting for quite a, a while, so there's got to be some kind of tricks or tips or something that you're doing that you go to to be able to connect with people. There's got to be something that you're using. If there's a person in the room, I'm going to connect with them and I'm going to talk to them. Whether it's I'm actually talking to them or they're just running the camera and I'm talking to the camera. I'm putting a face behind that camera. I'm literally going to name that person, give them a, a job, an age, a skill set, a background, and I'm going to talk to them. Hey guys, how's it going today? I'm Rossi Morielli and I'm going to take you on an adventure. Whatever that venture is, I don't know, and it doesn't matter. But you're with me, you can trust me, and I can guarantee you it's going to be fun. And that's, I'm talking to somebody. Instead of, hey, what's up, I'm Rossi, today's going to be a great adventure. You're going to come with me, and it's going to be so fun. But that's what a lot of people do. Because as soon as people say action, they're like, they want to be exciting. I want to be exciting. If you're not excited, you can't be exciting. You're just yelling at me. So how important is that then to be able to connect like that and to be able to gain this trust? It's the most important thing. If you can do nothing right, but you can connect with your audience, you can have a billion followers on YouTube. There's a thousand shows that work and don't work. There's a new talk show on every season. Some of them work, whether it's Kelly Clarkson or Tamron Hall's new show coming out. But how many have we seen fail miserably from the dude that wrote the book, she's just not into you, or we can go down the list of people yeah. that have tried to have their own talk show because people are like, oh, they have a great audience on Twitter. They should be great in person. No. That's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to find the people with 
the social media followings and put them into these roles of host. That's not what they do. They do Instagram modeling. They do six second vine clips. They do TikTok dances. They do YouTube from their house. They do slow motion videos. That's what they do. You can't just take someone that has a bunch of followers and throw them on a camera and expect them to be good. Yeah, it's that hosting skill, the hosting skill of that connection and that trust and that is absolutely pertinent. Rossi, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that kind of information with us and, and helping us to see that hosting skill there. Uh, and now that we've learned about that, we have got to learn just a little bit more about you. Rossi, I can't thank you enough for being here on the show. And we're, we're diving more into you and finding out about your journey. What other shows have you, have you hosted? Of the, don't tell me all of them because there's 45 plus, but... Um, I mean, some of the, some of the bigger ones, I, I hosted a show called Dating in the Dark on ABC. Uh, I used to air, uh, after the Bachelor pad and Bachelor in Paradise. Uh, did that for a couple seasons. I uh, had a game show. Uh, we did 170 episodes in 27 days called Temptation, which is just coincidence. Uh, it was the new sale of the century. They were revamping it and it was called Temptation. So that aired, like had a daytime game show. Uh, had a, sh a lot of shows on Discovery and um, the, the, all those networks. Riding with Rossi, Belly of the Beast, like a bunch of car shows, super bikes from the speech. I did a bunch of car and engine and truck and hiking and camping and like just outdoor shows because that's, that's kind of who I am uh, as, a, as an Arkansas kid. And then I did a show called Escape Routes for NBC. And, and Can You Duet on CMT is probably one of the other bigger ones. It was like American Idol, same company and everything, but just for country duos on CMT. What's something that you know now that you didn't know then? Everyone always asked me like, who, like how'd you get into hosting? Did you always born be a host? Who was your, you know, who did you look up to? And, I, and I, I, I'm, I'm always like, uh, uh, Johnny Carson? I don't know, no, not Johnny Carson. My dad watched Johnny Carson. I watched it. Letterman maybe, but like, again, yeah. not my, so I never really had an answer. Uh, I learned and, and I would say, probably focused all my hosting values and education on my students. So once I became a host, my manager had a hosting class and she taught it because she'd been host, she's been in a hosting for 20, 25, 30 years at this point, you know, 40 years probably at this point. And so she would have her host come in randomly and kind of do their thing. And my thing was always I'm exactly who you see on camera as you see off camera. I am big energy. I'm always, it, it cracks me up on my shows. People are like, oh, we should just calm down. Calm down? You, you, I couldn't be more calm just because I have more energy than you. And you're like <laughs> death on a stick doesn't mean that I'm hyper. I'm just, I love life. So I'm, I have a lot of energy and that's what comes out. And so, but, but watching students and watching them change and evolve and do things, I was like, oh, I do that. I gotta stop doing that because that does not look good. You know, doing the big, one big thing I learned from students 100% is I would always say, okay, you guys ready? Three, two, like you're talking about one. And you know what every host in the world does? <sighs> Can you imagine if you saw your friends or family and they're like, hey, Aaron, what's going on, man? How's the coronavirus been? And you were like, <sighs> That's very, that's very Jim Carrey and Ace Ventura, just ready to rattle off all this information. What are some of the other skills that you saw or that you were picking up on? People think in their mind they have to be exciting. I have to be a host. And I always tell people in my class that were paying me, I'm like, let me tell you something. You don't have to be a host. You either are a host or you are not a host. I can hone your skills, but if you don't like people, if you're not quick on your feet, if you're not smart, if you're not fun and actually like life and people, you're not gonna be a good host. I don't care how much money you think is in it. What is it that sparked in you that kept you going on the path to be a host? I mean, a lot of it has been kind of God's plan. I'll be honest, I, a lot of times I've tried to check out of this industry uh, and, and, and prayed a lot and been like, listen, if this is not for me or not the road I was being, let's, I don't have to do this. I like it. I enjoy it, but I don't have to do this. And then I meet my wife. Uh, I mean, something would always kind of happen about the time, every time I had that doubt, something would happen and it would like push me back into it. And I was like, okay. It became about other people. Like I, 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 I started a company called Event Host Live 
because I loved teaching and then this gave me an op- but I hated it that I would teach people and then I would kind of send them home like, good luck. And, and, and I couldn't do anything for them because I wanted to teach them and then I wanted to watch them work and then I wanted to like, kind of like, fly birdie, fly and go do better and be bigger than I was because I don't have an ego about that. There's people out there that say they're host, but I think that there is a big difference between a host, an MC, an announcer. So how would you define a host? Well, so this is an interesting question for me because I, I was dubbed a jack of all trades, master of ceremonies a decade ago. So it's not, so if you're an announcer, or, so for, for me, a host is someone that can take their life experiences and translate it into an informational, entertaining way for an audience to take them on a journey that they want to be on. That to me is a host. I would take all the things you said and I would put them all into hosts. There are people that are good announcers. There are people that are good sideline reporters. There are people that are good, you know, those different things. But to be a host, you have to be able to take someone else's information or your life, connect the two, and then give that information to your audience in an entertaining and connecting way where they want to listen. I'm on this journey. I mean, that is a part of what this show is, like I said, to figure out what it means to be a host and how to get into it because not many people, as they're growing up, go, I want to be a host. I want to be just like this person. They want to be like Ariana Grande or they want to be like this doctor or this football player or this tennis player, and that's what they want to do. And it's very rare to hear someone go, I want to be a host. I want to be just like Ryan Seacrest or Steve Harvey. Like, But see, like Ryan Seacrest is a host. He's great at facilitating, maneuvering, staying in, staying here. He controls the stage, executive produce, host, everything, right? But I don't find Ryan Seacrest entertaining. Steve Harvey is an entertainer. He's yeah. just funny. And so you give him a microphone and he happens to be able to harness hosting skills and he takes his entertainment naturals entertaining side and he blends them and he's a great entertainer. Rossi, I gotta thank you so much for all this information that you've given us about the industry and about yourself um, and about how to get into hosting and what to look for. Uh, but I wanna narrow in on the industry a little bit more in this next segment I like to call, Are You Sure? Rossi, like I said, we're gonna be playing a game here called Are You Sure? It's a trivia game and here's exactly how it works. I'm gonna ask you a trivia question that is about the entertainment industry, specifically about hosting. Uh, once I ask you the question, you'll give me your answer. I'll ask you, are you sure? You'll lock in your answer by saying the answer and I'm sure. And then we'll find out if you are incorrect or if you are correct. Earlier on in the show, we saw you on a clip with Jimmy Fallon, who is one of six hosts that have hosted The Tonight Show. One of those hosts hosted for two separate tenures. Who was that host? Jay Leno, and I am sure. All right, he says Jay Leno, I'm sure. Rossi, you are correct. That's right. It was Jay Leno. He was there for a, a good amount of time from 92 to 2009. After that, Conan O'Brien came in. And then Jay Leno was like, no! <laughs> and he came back. <laughs> so because of that, uh, Jay Leno came back and he was there for another term from 2010 to 2014 before Jimmy picked it up. Let's flip this script. I just played... Are You Sure With You? You are a host as well. So I'm gonna pass you the mic to play Are You Sure With Me? I'm gonna stick with the game show theme because when I was young, game show hosts were the only hosts. Uh, minus late night talk show hosts. So I'm going game shows. I always love game shows. My dream is to host another game show. They're my all time favorite shows. So who is the longest running game show host? Of all time? That is a tough question. Uh, so I think about the different hosts that are out there that have been hosting for a long time. I think about Pat Sajak, and he's been on Wheel of Fortune. Jeopardy and Alex Trebek, they've, they've been doing that for a long time. But I think it's, I think we've got to go with The Price is Right and, and Bob Barker. I feel like he's been doing it 
for the longest of time. So I'm going with Double B, Bob Barker, I'm sure. As of 2014, in the Guinness Book of World Records, the longest running game show host is Alex Trebek. Oh, I knew it. I, I get so close with these and I don't trust my instinct. Those are the three. <laughs> I love it. Well, Rossi, man, that was, uh, that's Are You Sure? That's a fun little trivia game to, to give us some more knowledge about the entertainment industry. And as we move towards the close of the show, I have 10 final questions that I want to ask you. Here we go, Rossi. I have 10 final questions for you. As I ask you these questions, just give me the first word or phrase that kind of pops in to your mind. Okay. What's one word that describes what you do? Entertainer. What's one word or phrase that describes what people think you do? Mm, talk too much. <laughs> what do you most look forward to about an event or a show? The effect, the, the, the positive effect that it can have on people and their life. What do you least look forward to about an event or a show? Sweating. Sweating, <laughs> what an answer. What's the most rewarding part about what you do? That's an interesting question. If you're talking about career-wise, it's meeting my wife on a game show, marrying her and having two daughters. That's the most rewarding part of what I have do has led me to. The most important what I do on a daily basis would be... I'm sorry, time's up. Let's move to the next question. <laughs> if you couldn't do what you do now, what would you attempt to do? College football coach. What profession would you never want to do? Sitting behind a desk, inside, lie, just on a mouse, on a computer, anything in front of a computer. Just do that. Well, this show is in front of a computer, so we'll, uh, we'll, just, we'll just edit that out and post. Um, <gasps> how will you know you made it? I've made it. How do you know that you've made it? I know that I've made it because I've been able to do something that probably less than 1% of the, 1 of the world has ever gotten a chance to do. I've actually made it onto TV and I've been a TV show host. 25 years from now, what would you want people to remember about your talent? That I was the most exciting and energetic person in the room. And our 10th and final question, I am a host because blank or I host because blank? I am a host because God gave me an ability and laid out a very weird, interesting path that has led me to where I am. And there's no doubt in my mind he's got full control over the whole thing. Ten final questions all about Rossi. Rossi, as we move into the end of this show here, uh, you're a host as well, so I'm going to throw it to you to do the soft close of the show. Well, Aaron, I gotta tell you, man, this has been uh, a fun experience. It's definitely a, a good trip down memory lane, talking about all the things that I've done in the past and kind of what, what's got me here and, and why. It's always fun to actually hear yourself talk about it and almost inspire inspires me to, to continue pushing and, and doing what I'm doing. So thank you for that opportunity. Uh, what we did never get into was the things that I'm working on right now in the present. So uh, tomorrow night is actually the finale of the show that I'm hosting right now and ex executive producing as well. It's called the American Air Gunner Challenge on the Outdoor Channel and it's on 7.30 Eastern Time on the Outdoor Channel. So make sure you check your local listings. Uh, and for any information on that show, you can go to AmericanAirGunner.com. Also, if you're a host and you think you've got what it takes to be a live MC across the country, go to eventhostlive.com and submit your materials. We'd love to see headshots, reels, any video you've got of you doing what you can uh, in a hosting experience or a hosting uh, environment, and we'd love to see that. Other than that, you can follow me at Rossi Morielli on all social media and Make sure you go to Facebook, of course, check out Be The Change USA, who, is, who helps put all of this on. And you can go to Set The Tone TV on Instagram and IGTV to see highlights and past episodes, the past two episodes that have already been done, of course, the future episodes coming out. I'm Rossi Morielli. Thanks for watching. Set The Tone. Well, there you have it. A truly unique personality. I'm excited to share another guest journey with you on our next episode as we learn more about the craft of hosting. I'm your host, Aaron Smalls, and we'll see you next time when the lights are up, the mic is hot, and we set the tone. <laughs>